This type of video has got to be my favorite. There's something about unboxing videos and getting new fish that just makes you feel just different. Like I, it's literally been two hours since I got these fish. And that's a whole other story. I have an amazing tour to share with you guys. Andres over at Bio Aquatics, that's where I got these fish. He was nice enough to hook me up with these. Um, I did pay for them, but he gave me a great deal. Um, I'm gonna be releasing a tour of those, uh, I'm releasing a video of that tour next Sunday. And um, it's something I've been waiting for probably for a year. The first time I went there was about a year ago. And Andres is a master breeder. He used to sell directly to the big boys, like the big distributors. And about a year, year and a half ago, he switched over to retail. Um, and he's just a passionate, you know, fish breeder at heart that happens to also make it his live, make it his living. Make sure you don't miss that video. If you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? And if you haven't hit that bell, make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss the video when it comes out. But on to the fish. And this is kind of like an early uh, birthday present for me, actually. Uh, I'm filming this on the 25th. And my birthday is actually when you're going to see this video on um, the 27th, this Sunday. So this is like a, an early birthday present. Big thank you to Andres and his buddy Dre over there at uh, Bioaquatics for hooking me up with these fish. And like I said, just showing me around uh, the tour. I got to make all these, all these fish are freaking amazing. I'm going to start with these guys. These are Cintodontis petrocola. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I have some of these. I actually have one. And I actually originally bought six of these from Andres a little over a year ago. I grew them out and I ended up having a heater mishap. I'll link that video below. It, was, um, it wasn't a heater mishap. It was me uh, doing a water change. And I met, I, it was the first time I did a water change was safe and I think I messed it up. S slash, I, you know, the temperature of the water. I did a bunch of newbie mistakes and I ended up killing off all but one of my Cintinatus petrocola. And if you guys aren't familiar with this fish, definitely, you know, do some research. It's a great fish. It's not the cheapest fish in the world, and it's not everywhere. As a matter of fact, Andres is one of the only guys to breed the fish. Um, that's how I first found Bioaquatics and Andres. I was looking to buy this fish, and a few people around here, some, you know, larger farms actually, didn't have the fish in stock. They had it on their website, but they're out of stock. And I did some researching, it's because there's only one guy breeding them, and it was Andres, and he didn't have them, or he wasn't selling them to them at that time, and he was switching over. Regardless, I went directly to the source, and Andres is the source for these for, I'm not saying everybody, but for a lot of people. Um, and that's why I love dealing with Andres, because, like I said, it's really cool, because he's the passionate man behind making the fish breed, um, and he's just a really cool guy. Uh, matter of fact, when I was over there today, the third time I met the guy, and we usually, you know, first two times I just went to buy fish, today I went to buy fish, and he was gracious enough to let me film a video, and we usually spend, like, two hours plus. Now, if you're a fish guy or girl out there, and you get, and you know this, if you get two fish people in the world, in a room together, they, you're probably going to be there for a while. Um, I happen to be a talker. You can ask anybody I know. I happen to be a talker anyway. So I'm a talker. I'm not sure if Andres is a talker, but together we're talkers. Um, and big thanks to his friend Dre for kind of separating us. Andre had to go pick up his, his son. And um, like I said, we probably going to talk for hours over fish. And I hope to, I will be back there again soon. And I hope to frequent there, you know, more and more. But I digress. Um, move on to the next fish. This is something I was not um, planning on taking away or picking up and taking home today. And that are some Neo Lamprologus Lalupe. Now these are a, a Lake Tanganyika cichlid. Um, I have some Lake Tanganyika cichlids, actually some, some daffodil cichlids that I got from Andres last year. And um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna add these to that tank yet. These are actually gonna go in a, a quarantine tank. Um, I actually just moved out uh, the panda quarries, which they're actually sitting here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm adjusting them to this tank. I actually only have two panda quarries that made it through quarantine. I'm gonna pick up some more soon. And then the Beicher is quarantining in the 55 gallon across from us and uh, making room for these fish that I'm gonna quarantine in a 10 gallon for a little bit. Um, those last fish ended up staying there for a month. Um, I did have some issues with some fungus. Um, like I said, those fish came directly from um, a big farm distributor and I should have medicated right away. I didn't, I kind of waited. They were doing fine, then I saw some signs, then I medicated. I'm still kind of undecided. These are coming from a different source. Um, so I'm probably not gonna medicate once again, but I'm gonna be doing that game. I don't, if you're, I don't know if it's got a name out there, but when you get new fish, 
You know, I'm going to be looking to check and make sure every single one of them's there like multiple times a day, running over to that 10 gallon tank, peeking in and making sure, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six of these uh, Balupe and I think actually nine, uh, nine Cincinnati Petrocola. Andres hooked me up big time. Um, so I, you know, just counting those just to make sure they're all there um, and being in, in that kind of mode. Uh, if you if you can relate to that, drop me a comment down below. If you can relate to you know getting new fish and then running back to your tank multiple times a day, this is really special. These fish are probably not as rare as these other two fish. Not that any of these fish are like super rare by any means. Um, these you could find around, but they're my first time I've ever kept them, and that's clown loaches. And in my opinion, what makes these special is these are tank raised clown loaches raised by Andres. And I know that's like sounds crazy and a lot of people don't believe me or him and it doesn't really matter. That's not the point. Um, I, it's, it, they're just cool. They're super freaking tiny. They're super cool. You'll see when I released the video tour that I did at his place, he has, you know, large clown loaches. He's shown me clown loaches, you know, and in breeding mode, essentially. Um, so I haven't been there. I haven't seen the, them do the dirty and the eggs hatch out. Um, but regardless, it's just super cool. I'm in admiration of Andres and everything he does. Um, and you'll see that, you know, the amount of baby clown loaches he has <laughs> when the video comes out, it's, 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 it's awesome. Definitely, you know, check out his website, bioaquatics.com. I'm gonna go ahead and um, we'll show you guys getting these guys acclimated into the tank. And I'm, I'm really excited. I haven't been this excited in a long time for, for new fish. Um, you know, it's always nice to get new fish, but these especially, it's just something really special and, you know, kind of cool as a birthday treat uh, to treat myself uh, to some fish, even though, like I said, you know, Andre's hooked it up big time. Thank you. I'm going to take my time adjusting these guys and acclimating them to the water. I'm going to let them sit here and temperature acclimate a little bit. And then I'm also going to just slowly, you know, kind of not necessarily drip, but add water um, a little bit at a time over the course of probably at least an hour. I typically don't acclimate that long. I don't necessarily plop and drop, but with these fish, um, the Lupe typically, I think Andre said he raises most of his fish. He has like a well of water, but he also cuts it with RO. Um, typically, these Lupe are, you know, the hard water fish. Same thing with the Sinanathus catfish. Um, the clown loaches, if you guys are familiar with them, they're typically like a, you know, a lower pH, a 6.5 to 7. Doesn't mean you can't keep them um, higher. They definitely can be kept higher, but I'm um, especially just, you know, want to be aware when um, adjusting these guys and acclimating them over you know, to my water, because I am using tap water. And, um, you know, like I said, this is definitely gonna be an adjustment for them. I moved them over to some containers and added a little bit of water from the tank. And I'm gonna slowly do that, like I said, over about an hour or so. As you can see, like, that's why I love these Sinanatus petrocola or lucipinus, whatever you wanna call them, that swimming motion. Even when they're super tiny, that swimming motion is like really freaking cool. And these clown loaches are already really, really growing on me. They're really freaking tiny. And I know usually people are like, oh, I want to see that big, big clown loach, which one day it'll be really cool to get these guys that big. And I think it'll be even more rewarding to look back at this footage and how small they are now. Um, you know, same thing with all these fish, but especially those clown loaches because they're going to get fairly big. And these Lupe are already coloring up a little bit. Um, the ones at his place were, the, especially the adults, I have the light kind of back there so you can't see as much, but the, the adults were colored up and even the babies were pretty colored up in the bag earlier. You know, obviously they get a little, uh, lose a little color, but I'm really excited to get these guys in this tank for a while and then add them to their forever homes eventually. All right, it's time to release our friends here that have been acclimating. It's been about two hours and I feel comfortable now. Like I said, I really wanted to just kind of give it some time, let them sit and get acclimated to this water. And what we're gonna do is just use a net and pour the fish out over it so we don't get any of the water from the bags into this new tank. We're gonna start with the Lupe and we're just gonna pour them out. I got a bucket underneath them. So we're gonna pour them out into the net. they go into the tank. Now I left the lights off and I'm gonna keep the lights off for a while just so they can acclimate better. Uh, typically, you know, it simulates a nighttime, let them feel more comfortable, not worried about stressing out as much. We got all six. A 
One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go to the plant launchers next. Same process. It's going to pour them out into uh, the net. And then we'll bring it over here and get them into the tank. Now, two of these are destined for my buddy Rob. Actually, one of the uh, Lalupe is destined for Aquafunk. If you guys don't know Aquafunk, go check out his channel uh, here on YouTube. My buddy Rob is going to take some of these loaches because he's a loach guy and I think he'll, uh, he'll raise them right. Last thing is going to be these Cynodontis Petricola catfish. We've got nine of these suckers. And we're going to do the uh, process once more. It is the next morning, guys, and I just put some food in the tank. I wasn't expecting them to be hungry, but I know that since they, these, all these fish are still really tiny fry, I don't think, I mean, maybe he sells some of these fish at this size, but I think normally he would grow them out a little longer. Um, they seem to be doing fine, no losses, everyone's alive so far, and they're actually hungry. As soon as I put a little pellet in, I put one pellet in first to see, all the lupe kind of swarmed it, the catfish started waking up, the loaches, actually, when I first walked out here, guys, the loaches are already my favorites. I walked out here and all six of them were kind of swimming out and schooling. And it was like, it was cool. I, I guess I've never kept clown loaches before. It was a really cool sight. <laughs> They're really tiny and uh, I, don't, I don't care. It was, just, it was super freaking cool. Last night when I was checking on them, they were all kind of hiding and that's fine. But this morning, everyone seems to be much more adjusted, much more comfortable. I actually just put a few pieces of flake in there. That's why you see the Lupe are definitely, you know, super aggressive. Um, towards the food, which you know is allowing me to feel a little more comfortable that they're acclimated and uh, obviously the Cytodontus petricola seem to be eating um, The clown loaches. I don't know if I noticed them eating yet But they're definitely seem to be active and schooling and kind of just you know hanging out So so far so good there So I forgot that last night I actually put a few baby ramshorn snails in here and as you can see um, some of them seem to still be in there, but I'm hoping that the clown loaches will, you know, get some interest in some of those snails. And believe it or not, even if there was no clown loaches in here or anything that ate snails, I, I usually stick a few snails inside of a, a bare bottom quarantine tank just to kind of help keep, or, you know, fry tank, just to kind of help keep the, um, you know, the bottom of the tank clean, make sure that, you know, if there's any leftover food, the snails can help pick it up. Uh, but you definitely want to monitor that population and in this case, like I said, the clown lunches will help me do that. So it's the next day and everyone has been adjusting well. They've been feeding on a little bit of flake food and they seem to be, you know, comfortable. I've turned the lights on a little bit. The clown lunches seem to be kind of congregating up and down this corner. The, um, the lupe seem to be really comfortable. And the catfish, they're kind of hiding right now, but they're all, believe it or not, kind of tucked away in this, this wood. They've been really scurrying, you know, in and out of this wood. Um, all the time that I've been watching them. But I'm, I'm really happy. I wish I could just freeze this tank and keep everybody miniature. It's pretty cool to have these really tiny kind of thumbnail sized fish. But you know, maybe, maybe eventually people will uh, figure out a way to breed nano fish that are based off of uh, big species. But until then, I will enjoy these guys as they grow up. And I'll definitely be sure to clue you in on these guys as they grow. We're gonna film another tour here soon. So we'll definitely keep you guys updated. And I'm excited to uh, get these out of quarantine and put them in their forever home, forever tank. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Definitely make sure you guys stay tuned next Sunday for the tour of Bio Aquatics. If you guys like these fish, you can see hundreds more of these type of fish and then dozens more really cool cichlids, shrimp. There's a little bit of something for everybody. And in my opinion, Andres is an amazing breeder and a really cool guy. So definitely looking forward to next week's video. As always, guys, stay positive and stay passionate.